Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do the summary of exponents. Now in grade 11 you will see that they completely do exponents and then they don't refer to it again in grade 12. But it is totally examinable in grade 12. Therefore you rather master the concept in grade 11 so you don't need to continue with it in grade 12. Now in grade 11 Besides knowing the grade 11 work, you need to be familiar with the grade 10 laws. Uh, basically, how you would join, how you would separate, what would you do when the t sum has multiplication and division, what do you, would you do when the sum has addition and subtraction. But all this you can find in our grade 10 summary video and you would be fine. Let us look at the following example. Because we have more than one term, we know we are going to separate. So, we are going to separate 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of 2. Now, be careful again. 2 to the power of 2x is not 2 to the power of 2 plus x. Then we have minus 5 times 2 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Why am I bringing the 1 over? Because I should know by now that if I have 2 to the power of 2x, I am looking at a trinomial. 2 to the power of x, we are going to make it equal to k. Giving us k squared times 4, because 2 to the power of 2 is 4, minus 5k plus 1 is equal to 0. Right, so we have... 4k squared minus 5k plus 1 is equal to 0. 4k k. So we factorize the trinomial. We get 4k minus 1. k minus 1 is equal to 0. Leaving us with 4k is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1. You have to go back. You have to press 2 to the power x in place of k because the question says solve for x, not solve for k. So we have 4 times 2 to the power of x is equal to 1. 2 to the power of x is going to equal to 1 over 4. If we're going to break down our 4, exponents revolve around prime numbers. So we're going to have 2 to the power of minus 2 is equal to 2 to the power of x. Once they have the same bases, I can cancel them. I have x is equal to minus 2. The next one is k is equal to 1. So we have 2 to the power of x is equal to 1. We know that the rule states anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Therefore, I will change my 1 to 2 to the power of 0. Why am I choosing 2? Because that's the base I want. So I got 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power 0. Once they have the same base, I can cancel them out. x is equal to 0. When you're getting these sums, they don't always come in an equation form. Sometimes they would simply give you this part to simplify. As long as you apply the rules where plus or minus means I have to separate and then factorize, you will be okay. The general rule for plus and minus when it comes to exponents is make sure that they are in prime numbers. Number two, separate. Be careful when you're separating. The most common mistakes is where you get a number to the power of 2x. Then you are going to factorize. Now factorize is not limited to take out a common. It could be trinomials. It could be difference of two squares. It can be k method. It can be fractions. Any factorizing that would immediately lead to solve for x. When you're doing these sums, some of them would stop after you factorize. Some would continue to solve for x. But the method does not change. Right. The next thing in grade 11 you do is certs. 
When you're doing certs, they would emphasize do not use a calculator. If you are using a calculator, make sure that you clearly show all, um, all term values. Let's take the following example. Root 18 minus root 12 all over root of 72 minus root of 48. Now, the general rule for thirds is when you have a number, if you press it in your calculator, it immediately gives you the answer, right? Let's do root of 18. If we were doing it without a calculator, we would use the fishbone. Our answer would be 3 root of 2. Now, let us make the question a bit more complicated. Let us put m to the power of 6 to every value. Okay, for, so for 18, we would have had 3 root of 2. But how do we do m to the power of 6? Now, the general rule for thirds is that it is always the inside over the outside. So if I gave you 5 to the power of 3 outside square root 2, my answer would be 5, 3 over 2. So we are taking inside over outside. Now based on that rule, we would have had m 6 over 2 minus, now the square root of 12 is 2 square root 3, again m inside over outside, so it's 6 over 2, all over the square root of 72 is 6 root of 2, m 6 over 2, minus the square root of 48 is 4 square root 3, m 6 over 2. Now, in the exams when you are doing this, if you are not familiar with the square roots, you can press this part in your calculator. Get the answer and then go on to do the unknown based on this rule, inside over outside. It is important that in the exam, you don't write down a final answer. You have to do each term. So you have to do root of 18. Then you have to do root of 12, root of 72, root of 48. You can't just give a final answer. That's how come it is worth three or four marks. If you give a final answer, you'll only get one mark. Now let's continue. Once we have done this, we have 3 square root 2 m3 minus 2 root of 3 m3 all over 6 square root 2 m3 minus 4 square root 3 m3. You're not done. At this level, whenever you have two terms in exponents, which is part of thirds, you have to factorize. So let us look on the top. What is common? m to the power of 3 is common. We are left with 3 root of 2 minus 2 root of 3. All over. At the denominator, we have 2 m to the power of 3 as a common, leaving us with 3 root of 2 minus 2 root of 3. Now we can cancel. So we can cancel. And our, we can even cancel the m to the power 3 with the m to the power 3, leaving us with a final answer of 1 over 2. Okay, so this is an easy way to score marks if you are not careless. Thank you for watching.